Good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you on this Lord's Day. It's a joy to see you this morning. So glad that you have come for our time of worship here at St. John's. My name is Jim Hoffman. I have the privilege of being pastor here, and it is my privilege to welcome all of you today. For those of you at home, we welcome you as well. We're so glad that you are joining us today. Those of you present, I'm going to encourage you to take a moment to find your attendance pads and sign in and let us know that you are here. Those of you at home, we encourage you to do the same. You can do it through the sign-in form that comes through the Sunday morning email, or you can also leave us a quick comment on Christian World Media that lets us know that you're present with us, and we'd appreciate you doing that. Find your worship guide as well online so that you can follow our order of worship. For those of you here, you should have received one of them today, and everything that you need to participate in our worship service is contained in it. Just simply follow along. Also has our invitations for this week, and I'd encourage you to take a moment to read through all of those. It's a kind of a short list in your worship guide. I would remind you, pay more attention to Friday ministry news. You'll get a full understanding of everything that's going on in the life of your church, but there's just a few things that are highlighted for this week. If you look at the calendar, it's a pretty busy week here at the church, so lots of things about the ways in which we worship, learn, serve, and witness opportunities for you to be a part of those, and so I would encourage you to read through them if you would please. Uh, don't forget Wednesday evening, 645, most important thing going on, men's pizza night. Men's pizza at Waldo, so come join us for that. Uh, other things in here, take a moment and look through them. Uh, don't forget to also pay attention to our uh, youth appreci or, uh, uh, volunteer appreciation lunch that's coming up. 
Sunday, February 26th. Let us know if you plan on attending. This is for anyone that, that volunteers, which is basically all of you here. Uh, everybody volunteers for something, so come and join us for our lunch. It's our way of sh uh, showing our appreciation to you. Uh, youth matinee today, so the kids are going to be here watching a party here, or watching a party. <laughs> having a party watching a movie. That's what I meant to say. Uh, having a party watching a movie, so they're going to have fun today. But uh, Just continue to read through all of those. Hey, by the way, don't forget, look at the pictures on the back of your worship guide. You missed out on a great time last Sunday. They all went bowling, and it looked like it was a great crowd there. I stopped by before I went off to the church business meeting thing. I much rather would have stayed in bowl, believe me. But, so Today we're going to continue our uh, message series titled Coming of the Lord and what it means for Jesus to preach to us that the good news has come. So I'm looking forward to speaking with you about that. As we continue in worship, on page number three, you're going to see our opening hymn for today. It is, When Morning Gilds the Skies, United Methodist Hymn number 185. As you are able, I would invite you to stand and let's sing together. <laughs> Cop, Director of Children's Youth and Family Ministries, and our call to worship this morning is on page three of your order of worship. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech. And night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth. And their words to the end of the world. The glory of God echoes throughout the world. Let us praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Please remain standing as you are able for our hymn of praise this morning. It is Spirit of God from the Faith We Sing, number 2117. Let us join our voices together in stanzas one, three, and five. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
You may be seated. It is now time for children's moments. So any children and children at heart, this is your moment and you may come forward at this time. Todd Gardner, don't get too comfortable in the back. I'm gonna need your assistance in like two minutes. So you've been prepared. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good, thanks for coming up today. I get lonely when I'm all by myself. So I have a question for you. Do you guys have any friends? Yeah, is it easy being a friend? Sometimes. You know, I was talking with your mom last night because we're in a dinners for eight group together and she said that you guys were gonna be in church this morning and I knew that you were gonna help carry this children's moment, Jack, so no pressure, okay? <laughs> so, is being a friend easier? or can it be kinda hard sometimes? It can be kinda hard sometimes. It's hard being in friendships or in relationships or in families or peers. It can be kinda hard sometimes. So I brought a candle with me today and I even forgot to light the candles behind me. Jim had to do that this morning because I was so busy remembering to bring the lighter with me. I forgot to light those candles. But I'm gonna light this candle now. Has anybody ever like told you that like you're like full of life or light or anything like that? No, never happened. How about during COVID and you guys were wearing your mask and Miss Allie told you to smile and you said, we don't need to smile because nobody can see it. And I said, yes, they can. They can see it in your eyes. Do you remember that? Yeah. So then I'd make you stop and like smile and then we had to take the picture a second time. Yeah. Okay, so we all have a light that's within us. It's not necessarily like a real fire and everything, but you can <laughs> see when somebody's happy and everything. They can kind of like exuber, ex ex they, they look like full of light, yeah. Can somebody help me with my big grown-up word that I was trying to say? Thank you, okay. English is hard sometimes. So anyway, so sometimes you can see that people are filled with life and everything, and that light that you have inside you, that's your spirit, it's your soul, and it's your light, and it's your light to brine, to brine. I feel like you started this this morning, Jim, by not being able to talk, and now it's contagious. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we all have a light that is in us and it is bright. Okay, there we go, bright light, I can do this. So if you surround yourself with people in life, it's good to have friends that can see your light and they can say things like, wow, that is a great and beautiful and amazing light that you have within you. And it's good if you have friends and you can tell them the exact same thing. You can tell them, wow, they have a beautiful light within them. You don't want to be around people that are candle blower outers. I know it's fun to blow out the candles, but you don't want somebody to blow out your light. So can you guys think of any way that we can protect our light or show our light or not be a light candle blower outer? Be nice. That's perfect. That was going to be my thing is to be kind to one another's. So some ways that we can be kindness, be kindness, show kindness, show kindness. Miss Allie's going to learn how to talk by the end of today. Okay. I have candy. It always ends with candy. Just know that, kids. <laughs> so one way that we can show our light to others is to be kind and everything. So there was a couple Sundays back, I was here at church and it was dark because I was getting all the lights turned on. And I noticed something in the back. I was kind of looking at our kids' stuff and everything, and I thought that it needed a little bit of a freshening upness. It, that one did get away from you, and that's okay. We're going to let it get away from us for right now. So what we're going to do is, Todd, can you do your best Vanna White for me in the back? So there's like some kids' stuff. Walk, yep, yep. Yep, with like the giraffe and like the lion and everything. So there's some new kids stuff back there. Do you just want to like, just pick anything, just Vanna White to the best of your ability. So, ooh, ah, <laughs> thank you, Todd, yes. Okay, do the other basket too, there's a second basket. So that basket has like colors and stuff in it. Then the second basket, Ooh, ah, thank you everybody. We have some new kids books back there. And I even decided that, you know, sometimes we all get a little hangry. Do you guys ever get hangry? All the time, love it. So I put in some little snackies in there. So there's like some goldfish and a juice box and some M&Ms and everything. So one way that you guys can be a light is you can help out Miss Allie. Do you think you're up for the task of helping me out? You're up for it? So if you're ever in church and you see somebody that's like around like your age-ish and everything, 
or if they just look hangry, either one will work and everything. Could you maybe go up to them and share some of your light and say what your name is and show them where some of my new goodies are and everything so that they feel extra welcome? You think you're up for that task? And if you wanna grab some for yourself too, like I'm okay with that as well. It's like a finder's fee. You good with that? Okay, so that's one way that you guys can help me be a light and to share some good news here at St. John's is showing anybody that's new here or just looks new or looks hungry where the snacks are and where the new books are. Can you do that for me? Perfect, I knew you could. Okay, you wanna fold your hands and pray with me? Awesome. Dear God, thank you for having your light within all of us. Help us shine our light and show others the good news that you are for us. In your name we pray, amen. So I know that we talked about not being candle blower outers, but I don't think Jen wants me to leave this lit a whole day so gently, because I don't want wax to go everywhere gently. There's three things, so you guys can just blow it. Just, there you go. You guys are so gentle, it's not, there you go. Okay, we got one. Nope, it came back. <laughs> No, they are not. You know what? We're going to leave that up for uh, Jim. If you want to blow out the candle, it's right there. Okay. So, yep. Yep. So anyway, so you guys get to come with me to Sunday school today. So I will let you pick out a piece of candy and I will meet you in the back. Thank you guys for being good listeners as I tried to figure out what words to use this morning. And thank you, Todd, for being an impromptu um, game show host. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to Sunday school. Candied pecan. Should we leave it on? <laughs> it has a nice smell to it. Although I may get hungry smelling the candy pecans and need one of those snack packs back there. Under the joys and concerns for today, you'll see those on pages five and six. I'd invite you to take a moment to read through those. Uh, first off, we say thank you to Sue. She provided our uh, cookies for today. So after worship is over, you are more than welcome to come and join us for some time of fellowship in our rotunda where we also have some coffee as well, so we'd encourage you to stop by. Under our concerns for today, we mentioned Reed and Christine Fisher last Sunday. Continue to pray for them, if you would please, particularly Christine. Luke Carroll, friend of Cindy and Barry Mayhew. Tim Doak, Gail Ween, Barb Meyer, and many others that are on our list that are family, friends, acquaintances. Continue to pray for each of these, if you would please. I'm going to invite us now to a time of private prayer, an opportunity for each of us to share with God what's on our own hearts. In a few moments, I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer. We will pause if there is a name that you'd like to speak out loud. We'll give you a moment to do that. And then I invite you to join with me as we close together in the Lord's Prayer, which you will see on page number six of your worship guide. But let's take a moment now to pause and pray. O oh God, whose mystery is as deep as the fog that sometimes shrouds our land, yet who has shown yourself clearly in the love and the teachings of Jesus, we praise you for the faith that has brought us together and for the great line of saints whose lives and witness have conspired to make believers of us across the years. Forgive, we pray, the busyness and indifference that often characterize our spirits so that we may not live with either joy or the commitment 
that might have marked our daily lives. We ask that you draw us back into your way, that we may experience redemption as sick, per sick persons experience recovery. And show us how to redesign our existence in keeping with your eternal plan. We remember the desperateness of the world beyond our walls. And we bow in prayer for the many people in our neighborhoods, our city, our communities beyond, and the world. Many have inadequate food and water. Some lack medical care. Others languish in things like ignorance and even superstition. Teach us to share of our own resources with them in such a way that the world no longer may be divided between those of us who have and those who don't. Give healing to those of our number who are ill or anxious today and remind us of the power of your spirit to transform every earthly situation. Give us, with, give us the gift of your word that it might challenge our self-satisfaction and raise our eyes to new horizons of love and self-giving. That way we may glorify you in all we think and say and do. Teach us to love as you have loved us. Teach us to serve others as you have served us. And may we bring healing and wholeness to your world through our words and our deeds. Hear our prayers of joy today, O Lord, and hear our prayers of supplication and seeking. For those particularly that are our family, our friends, that we lift up to you today, may your hand be upon them. For we know that you are our God, and we are your humble people. And so we pray these things and many other things through Christ our Lord. And now we pause to lift up any names that might be upon our hearts and minds that we wish to share now in this moment of prayer. And so all these things we pray in the name of your Son, who is our Lord and Savior, and the one who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Today I'm reading from Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 through 17 from the Common English Bible. You can follow along on page 7 of your worship guide. Now when Jesus heard that John was arrested, he went to Galilee. He left Nazareth and settled in Capernaum, which lies alongside the sea in the area of Zebulon and Naphtali. This fulfilled what Isaiah the prophet said. Land of Zebulun and Na land of Naphtali, alongside the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who lived in the darkness have seen a great light, and a light has come upon those who lived in the region and in the shadow of death. From that time, Jesus began to announce, change your hearts and lives, here comes the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Jill. So I have to just say this. You can see this thing in my hand, right? Thank the Lord for the smartphone. Anybody agree with me? No, some of you don't. Some of you would probably prefer that we go back to the days of just the simple flip phone that did really nothing more than just make a call, right? But if you think about it, the modern technology of the smartphone has basically made this like the Swiss army knife of technology. Right? It's a multifunctional tool these days. You think about the days when you used to have things like a camera, a flashlight, a calculator, a compass, a paper calendar, an address book, a ruler, an alarm clock, and even paper maps. You still do in some ways, right? Yeah. For most of us, those are no longer useful tools because they're all right here. For some of us, we may prefer to use those things that, were, that are mentioned. But I remember the days long before we, even we just had simple GPS, right? That nice little unit that you used to plug into your cigarette lighter and stick on your windshield. I remember the days before that, you know? Uh, back in the ancient days when you used to have things like paper maps that you got from your insurance agent. 
Barry Jennings is our insurance agent. Some of my folks here, they know Barry. He, his office is out in Lee Summit, and we've been with him for many, many years. And we used to love to get from Barry that big red map book that you used to be able to look through. It had all the states in it, you know, state by state and all. You could plan out any trip that you wanted to go to. Carolyn Jeter and I were talking about the days when you used to be able to go to AAA, and they would give you a map planner of your trip. Right? It was just a little fold-out thing, tell you exactly where you needed to go. Right? Love those big map things because it could tell you where you needed to go whenever you needed to go places. Margaret traveled four states for a lot of years, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, and Nebraska. And, and for a long time, she had a set of maps that were in the pocket uh, behind the passenger seat. And she would just carry those around her everywhere she would go. Sometimes she'd bring them into the house and she'd work off of them as she was planning her routes and she'd mistakenly leave one of them home that she needed. And, and then all of a sudden she'd call me in the evening and say, where am I? <laughs> well, honey, uh, as far as I know, you're somewhere around the four states, right? You know, and, and then I have to get out the map and try to help her figure out where it was that she was going. We used to use those big maps to plan family vacations as well so that we could get some places. We took a trip to go see my sister one year in Huntington Beach, California. We decided we'd go south a little bit to get there. So we went across South Kansas, all the way to Liberal. You know, if you've ever been out that direction, then you kind of hang a left at Liberal and you cut down through parts of Oklahoma and Texas, and then you wind up in Tucumcari, New Mexico, and then you kind of go west from there into Palm Springs area. We took that route going out, and then coming home, we decided we're not coming back that way. So we went through Vegas and Utah and Colorado and Kansas on the way home. Now, the map held us, helped us figure out where we were headed. Because we could have made a lot of wrong turns and wound up in Louisiana on that or something like that. We did the same when we went to New York City one time with the kids. We had the map out. We followed it all the way out, I-70 to I-78, straight into New York City, played around there for a few, few days, and then came back through Nashville. Intentionally came back through Nashville, by the way, all right? But you think about just the big maps that we had, how we found our way around. Because without them, you could just simply make a lot of wrong turns and find yourself wasting a lot of time trying to figure out where you were headed and get to the place that you were headed. And then the Garmin came out. And all of us thought we were progressing and it was going to be so much easier and until it recalculated and then recalculated and then recalculated again and it never got you where you wanted it to go, right? But Apple figured out how to make things like that obsolete in the smartphone. They gave us the option in our phone, and it tells us how to get some places. When we go on a road trip to see Chloe, Indianapolis is just complicated enough and going north from there that I still use my GPS to try to figure out how to make all the right turns to get me to Monroe in, in Michigan. When I was in Fort Lauderdale last week, I needed it to help me get around South Florida a little bit as well. I need my GPS to kind of get back and forth. But the interesting thing is, is if you ever plug in a destination, GPS typically doesn't give you just one route to take. They'll give you two or maybe three different routes that you can take, depending upon how much time you have, how direct you want to be, whether you want to avoid tolls or you don't mind going through the tolls, all these different things. It gives you a variety of ways in which you can get there. Same as is, is, is true when we plug in Chloe's address from our, our driveway. It'll give us three different ways that we can get to Monroe, Michigan. We have choices in the way in which we can go, the route that we want to take. And that's really true for our physical life. We have lots of choices in the routes that we want to take in our physical life. And the same is true in our spiritual life. We have true choices about our spiritual life and the way in which we can go in it. You think about the Gospel of Matthew and, and how we read it last week. Of course, we read the story about Jesus going out into the wilderness. The, the Spirit drives Jesus to the wilderness 40 days of fasting and 40 days of prayer, and near the end of it, Jesus is tired, and he comes to his time of testing and temptation. He resists all of that, and in the end of it, the angels come, and they minister to Jesus, take care of him, 
and it just simply moves to Jesus now being in Nazareth. The story is, doesn't fill us in an awful lot, just Jesus goes home. Finds out that John the Baptist is beheaded and decides it's time to move, and he goes to Capernaum and sets that up as his place of residence for the beginning of his public ministry. And the first thing that Jesus says is, repent. Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The beginning of Jesus' public ministry. Now, questions come to mind for me, and, and they're things like, you know, what is Jesus calling the people to repent from? Because we like particulars. We like definitions. We like lists. What is it that I'm supposed to be bad at or, or not supposed to be bad at, and what am I supposed to be good at, you know? So maybe it's things like drunkenness we add to the list, or maybe they were in adultery or idolatry, or they had greed, or, or maybe it could have been things like being unneighborly. Maybe they just simply ignored the poor and the sick and the lame. It could have been some of those things that they were supposed to repent from. Maybe one of the things, too, was that they were just lost in hopelessness, that God's people had no hope, and they needed to repent from that. It could also be things like maybe they forgot what it meant to live into the, the fullness of the Abrahamic covenant, you know? You shall be a blessing to other nations was this covenant that God made with Abraham. And, and yet they may not feel like they were much of a blessing because they were ruled by Roman oppressors. Or could it be that they just simply forgot the mandates of Scripture to take care of even the basis, the widow and the orphan? And they forgot it because they were too busy looking out for themselves. Or maybe they just simply capitulated to a, a religious system that kept them hostage to rules and regulations, and, and they never learned what it meant to promote the law of love. Maybe their sin was just simply wandering in darkness. But Jesus came to tell them and to show them that there was a better route in life to take, a, a route that would honor God, it would love their neighbor, it would lead them to eternal life. It was a route that would turn their world upside down because all of a sudden the first would be last and the last would be first. It was a route that would remind them that they could be things like salt and light that they could subvert the normal routines of being angry and how that was normalized in its ways in oppression, that they could be a people that could learn what it would mean to be faithful, to honor one another, to give forgiveness, to love where love wasn't warranted. It was a route that would show them what it means to be pious in their giving, their praying, and their fasting. It was a route that could lead them to be forgiving people as they were forgiven and to judge not lest they also be judged. In other words, it was a different way of walking in the world. It was a way that would be new and refreshing and hopeful for them. It was a different route that they could take in their spiritual life and their physical life. God became human in Jesus to call these people to a different way, a new direction, to take an alternate route in their journey each and every day. And that was the good news. The good news was a different route was available to them in this life, a life that would be worthy of the high calling of God, a life that would be pleasing to God. Sometimes I wonder if they recognized it. Sometimes I wonder if, if I recognize it, and maybe you do as well, because our vision sometimes is clouded. It's shrouded by a lot of different things in our world. Even in our church, it can be shrouded by too narrow a theology or practice that we forget some of these things, and we stop walking the walk that we're called to. I grew up in a church that had a particular understanding of what it meant to respond to the good news to repent of your sins and come and follow Jesus. Every service that I attended, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, there was always an invitation to repent. Every single service. The, the preacher never assumed that there was someone in the audience that didn't know the knowledge of God's love and grace and that somebody probably needed to hear that message of salvation, the good news, to repent this day. And so there was an altar call every single time. You could confess your sins almost as often as if I was Catholic, but I wasn't, right? 
But there was a lot of opportunities to seek forgiveness. It was offered up every service. Preaching the good news was about turning from your sin and living a holier life, which meant that I was taught that that's what it meant to repent. Turn or burn, baby. That was the basic message. But I've come to believe that the good news is more than just simply a call of prayer and repentance. Rather, it, it's a call to walk as well in the world in a new way. And it's a journey that takes feet and, and has footsteps to it. And it's a repentance, yes, from the past, but a journey into a new future. Ben Witherington, who's a, a noted Matthew scholar, wrote these words in regards to Jesus' message. He says, Jesus' invitation isn't merely to feel sorry for your sins or even just accept forgiveness for them, but rather to literally turn around and choose a different and wiser course of living. It's about choosing a different route. The one that Jesus offers to us is a different route. His GPS coordinates offer us a different destination than what we may think is the way of life. Pastor and author Alan Roxburgh says that for us to kind of follow the way of God means that we're supposed to be people who take up our cross and go lightly into the world. That's what he thinks is kind of that new direction that is offered to us. It isn't so much what we say, but how we actually live for Roxburgh. It's being less materialistic and being more conscious about the footprint that we leave. It's choosing to live less inside your house and, and more out on your front porch, to be more neighborly with those that you live near, to really seek out those who are the poor, the oppressed, and the marginalized, and do literally something to help improve their lives. And to let go of things like petty grudges against family and friends and neighbors, and to truly learn to live in forgiveness, mercy, and love. It's just simply an alternative route that will ultimately lead us to a better destination. If only we would go the way that God is inviting us to go. And yeah, it might start with sorry. You know, I can count the number of times I've seen a parent try to correct their little toddler and, and teach them what it means to say sorry. Grace and I were, were chuckling about this earlier in chapel service, right? For Brooke and Matt, they're trying to teach Chloe, our, our three-year-old granddaughter, what this means. And, and so the line often goes like this when you're in their presence. It's, no, ma'am, we don't do that. Now say, I'm sorry. And you'll hear that over and over and over during the day. No, ma'am, we don't do that. Now say, I'm sorry. No, ma'am, we don't do that. Now say, I'm sorry. Will you say that with me? No, ma'am, we don't do that. I'm sorry, right? And Chloe will then parent parrot her parent and say, I'm sorry. So you can just see the little cogs in that little brain going, right? right? The little three-year-old brain that's kind of confused and trying to make sense of this in the moment. The process isn't quite connected yet for her to make sense of this and what it means to repent and say, I'm sorry, and understand the difference between those things. But I'm confident that someday it will make sense for her, and one day our own repentance will make sense to us. And in that, we'll learn to walk a little bit closer to the path that God calls us to. God became one of us to show us a different way. And I'm sorry, God, that, that I haven't gone the way that you want me to go is part of that journey. It's starting that journey but just as important is the in, to that is the invitation to now literally take the steps that God calls us to, to follow faithfully on the alternative route that is laid out before us, to respond to God, to let God lead us, to let God bless us, and to let God make us prosperous as we walk in this good news, knowing that God will ultimately deliver us to where God desires us to go. But you know, ultimately in this too, one other question often comes to mind for me, and, and the question for this is, is, the journey isn't taken alone. Who's walking with you? And who are you bringing along with you as well? Let's take a moment to pause and pray. So gracious God, today we hear that good news. Repent 
and come and follow. You may have laid out before us a, a path and a, a way in which you would want us to go, and, and in some ways we have been able to follow that, and we might be even closely aligned to it. And then at other times we might find ourselves veering a little off to the left or the right, only to find your Spirit nudging us and drawing us back. We truly know, Lord, that, that in our faults and in our failures and, and in the frailty of who we are as human beings, a straight path isn't possible for us. But you know, we are thankful for the gift of your Spirit that can lead and guide us. And, and in the moments where we aren't listening and we aren't paying attention, you're going to draw us back. You're going to recalculate our lives and our journey, reorient us. So we just ask, oh God, that you help us to be sensitive to your presence. The ways in which you're nudging us back to the course, the path that you would have us to walk. That we'd be repentant of the moments where we've been self-willed and self-desired and we've chosen. In the moments in which we've simply, without even thinking about it, fallen off the path. We know that you're ever-present with us in leading and guiding, that your grace is bountiful, that your mercy is beyond measure, and that your love for us is something we cannot comprehend. And yet, we take delight in these things today. We praise you for the gifts that you have given to us and for the encouragement to come and follow you. May we do it with all that we have. And we pray this in Christ. Amen. I'm going to invite our ushers to come at this time for our morning offering as they come to receive your gifts today. I'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you that are present. For those of you that are at home, you are welcome to also participate in this moment of giving as well. We'd encourage you to use either Christian World Media and the giving tab that is there, or you can go to our website and you can give through our donate tab. To each and every one of you, though, thank you so much for your richness for your faithfulness and your loving generosity.
page number nine of your worship guide, you'll see the doxology, and I would invite you as you are able to please stand and let's sing together as we give thanks and praise to God. Page number 10 of your worship guide is our hymn of sending forth. There's within my heart a melody. United Methodist hymn number 380. And let's sing stanzas 1, 3, and 5 as we close. <laughs> go forth this morning, I encourage you to take your worship guide home with you. As you come to your time of daily prayer, pray over the names that are on our prayer list. There's a devotion that's included for this week. Again, don't forget, read through the invitations. They are for you. After the benediction, take an opportunity to pass the peace to one another before you leave today. Come and join us for a few moments of fellowship in our rotunda area, just right over here in the middle between the two buildings. Receive this blessing as you go forth today. May you go in grace and in peace. May you go knowing the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, for they are truly yours now and forevermore. Amen. And go, Chiefs. Yeah.